This is chapter 6. We're going to discuss genetics, conception, and fetal development. Genetics. What is it? The study of an individual gene and their effect on rare single gene disorders. Genomics. What is it? The study of all genes in the human genome and their interactions with each other, the environment, and the influence of psychosocial factors and cultural factors. What is a gene? It's the basic physical unit of inheritance that are passed from parents to their offspring, providing needed information for specific traits. Genetic disorders affect people of all ages from all socioeconomic levels and ethnic and racial backgrounds. Expanded roles for nurses with expertise in genetics and genomics have developed in all areas of women's health and maternal nursing. Specialized women's and nursing organizations endorsing essentials in genetic and genomic nursing exist. You can see this in your text, page 141. What important information is gained from genetics? We learn about ethnicity information. Genetic diseases are often have familial tendencies. Breast cancer susceptibility screening is done with predisposing screenings for genetics. Population-based screening, PKU, and newborns. Inborn error of metabolism, fraternity tests, profiles for criminals, DNA testing. These are just examples of what we do when we study genetics. The Human Genome Project is a project funded in 1990 by the National Institute of Health, NIH, and the U.S. Department of Energy. The goal was to the map the human genome. The human genome consists of approximately 3 billion pairs of DNA. This was a sizable task. It ended up in two results. All humans are 99.9% .9 identical at the DNA level. And number two, there are 20,500 genes in the human genome. Why is this information important? A later project called ENCODE 2012 found that 80% of the human genome sequence to a specific biologic function and mapped over 4 million regulatory sites where proteins interact with DNA. This discovery and the identification of inherited causes for many diseases rejuvenated the interest in family history and its importance. This information is found in your text on page 141. Gene identification. Genetic testing involves the analysis of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA, ribonucleic acid, and chromosomes to detect an abnormality. Most gene testing now are for single gene disorders. Prenatal screening tests. What tests are done and why are they done? You have maternal serum screening, which is a blood test for neural tube defects, chromosomal abnormalities such as Down syndrome, trisomy 18 and trisomy 13, with fetal ultrasound or sonograms to check the fetus for abnormalities, invasive procedures such as amniocentesis and chronic villus sampling, Age 35 to 40, these tests are done, and they're testing for chromosomal disorders and neural tube defects. What is a neural tube defect? A defect of the brain, spine, or spinal cord. This is a picture showing an ultrasound being utilized while they're testing doing a needle aspiration of an amniotic fluid, which is an amniocentesis. Um, when they're testing for abnormalities in the fetus. Carrier screening tests. Why are, what are they and why are they important? These are tests that are utilized to identify individuals who have a gene mutation for a genetic condition, but they have no symptoms of that disorder because it is autosomal recessive. Examples of this are uh, CF, sickle cell disease, and Tay-Sachs disease. Who might be an example of a carrier of this? The example would be the Jewish um, descent, and they are carriers of Tay-Sachs disease. You can see um, more of this information in your textbook, page 142. An example of population-based screening would be your newborn screening. Um, you can go to the www.ok.gov slash health slash child and family health slash screening to see the population-based screening that is required in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and another example would be paternity testing. 
there are many different types of genetic testing. Uh, one such type is direct to consumer. An example of this is your Ancestry.com. Um, another is genomic medicine. Uh, we use genomic medicine uh, to study infectious disease such as Klebsiella pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, the Ebola virus. Um, genomic medicine is studying genes and diseases that are widespread with no cure or those that are highly infectious. Um, also, studies of cystic fibrosis colorectal cancer, newborn screening. These are all examples of the genome and genetic testing. You can go to the following website, www.genome.gov, and read more information on genetic testing. This is just a little genomic humor. So what's the purpose of gene therapy? The aim of gene therapy is to correct the defective gene. Um, gene therapy is the placement of a healthy copy of a defective gene into the somatic cell. Gene therapy is being utilized in diseases such as cancer, HIV, hemophilia, and many types of cardiovascular disease. Um, we study this um, to find cures um, for infectious diseases as well as in retractable cancers. You can see more about this information in your textbook on page 142. When performing genetic testing, we must always consider ethical, legal, and social implications. There have been many concerns about the misuse of information through genetic testing. Informed consent um, is a big issue. Um, informed consent is difficult to ensure when the outcomes and benefits and risk may be unknown. You can read more about this in your text on page 142 and 143. Genes and chromosomes. All humans contain DNA and therefore genes. A genotype is the genetic makeup of an individual. A phenotype is the observable traits of an individual's genetic makeup, such as their physical features. All DNA is 99.9% .9 alike at the DNA level. The uniqueness we gain as humans are from those alleles that we might inherit from our parents. We all have um, 46 chromosomes. They're arranged in 23 pairs of homologous matched chromosomes, one of each pair from each parent. The normal female homologous chromosomes are XX and the normal male homologous chromosomes are XY. Chromosomal abnormalities. Major cause of reproductive loss is chromosomal abnormalities. Congenital problems, Gynecological disorders, 0.6% incident abnormalities in newborns are chromosomal, 6% stillbirths are due to chromosomal abnormalities, and 60% of spontaneous abortions are due to chromosomal abnormalities. You can find this information on page 144 in your textbook. Autosomal disorders. Autosomal disorders involve differences in the number of structure of autosome chromosomes, pairs 1 through 22. This results in unequal distribution of the genetic material, the egg and the sperm, at gamete formation. This information is page, found on page 144 to 145 of your textbook. Common disorders of an autosomal sort, Down syndrome, trisomy 21, trisomy 18, or trisomy 13. The most common trisomy disorder is Down syndrome. Sex chromosome abnormalities caused by a non-disjunction during gametogenesis in either parent. Females, Turner syndrome, monosomy 45X, underdeveloped ovaries, short stature, and webbing of the neck. An example in males is Klinefelter syndrome, trisomy XXY, and they have poorly developed secondary sex organs, small testes, are usually infertile, and slow to learn. And this information is found on page 145 of your textbook. These pictures are examples of Downs, Turner's, and Klinefelter syndrome. So what is the nurse's role in genetics? Nurses play many different roles. Um, many things that we have to be responsible for are to identify families who need genetic counseling, make referrals, have an active role in the genetic counseling, and have an emotional support for those families who need genetic counseling. And this information is on page 149 of your textbook. Nurses must have a working knowledge um, when it comes to genetics. 
um, in working with these patients. Um, they must be aware of advances in human genetics. They must have an awareness of potential effects of genet genomic testing and be aware of legal, ethical, and social issues families may undergo when undergoing genetic counseling. It is the nurse's responsibility to provide counseling to the family in a non-directive approach, avoiding making recommendations. The nurse should communicate genetic information in an unbiased manner. The first step to providing non-directive counseling is being aware of your own values and beliefs. This is a picture of fertilization and the different steps it takes from the unfertilized ovum to the fertilized ovum at day zero to the zygote to the first mitotic division to cell to the two cell zygote to day three on to day four and onward into the as they reach the endometrium. Cleavage. This is mitotic cellular replica replication where the zygote travels the length of the tube into the uterus. It takes approximately three to four days. This picture depicts cleavage. This is another um, picture depicting ovulation to implantation. I would like to discuss what happens during fertilization to get twins. For dizygotic twins, arise from fertilization of two ova, two implantations, and two placenta. These are fraternal twins. What about monozygotic twins? You have one fertilization, two implantations, and one chorion. This is found on page 165 of your text, and this would equal identical twins. So let's talk about fertilization. During sexual intercourse, sperm is carried in the male's ejaculatory semen and enters the female's vagina. The sperm travels through the mucus of the cervical canal and enters the uterus and swims into the ampulla, which is the outer one-third of the fallopian tube. If an egg, an ova, is present within the ampulla, fertilization or conception may take place. The fertilized egg is called a zygote. Let's discuss implantation. The zygote then moves through the fallopian tube by ciliary action. It takes about three to four days to enter the uterus. Rapid cell division is taking place, mitosis. Once the zygote is in the uterus, it floats freely for a couple of days, then penetrates the wall of the endometrium. These may cause slight bleeding. The condition of the uterine lining is critical for implantation of the zygote to take place. The rich vascular bed of the endometrial lining will support the development of a zygote. The zygote undergoes mitotic division, creating 16 cell mur murilla. The link provided is a short video of fertilization. If you will just click on it, it will lead you to a YouTube video of fertilization. Milestones in human development. Week four, external appearance forms, the heart develops, and beat, heartbeats are present. Week eight, nose, eyes, digits, mouth, main blood vessels, and CFS circulation is present. Week 12, nails, human appearance, skin is pink, head is direct, brain structural configuration is almost complete. Week 16, the human face, arm, leg, proportionate, scalp, and hair, primitive respiratory movements are present. Week 20, vernix caseosa appears, fetal movements strong enough to be felt. Week 24, alveolar ducts and sacs are present in the um, fetus can hear. Week 28, suck reflex is present, eyelids reopen, pupils capable of reaching to light, reacting to light. Week 30 through 31, assumed birth position, sense of taste present, testes are descending. Week 36 through 40, lanugo is disappearing, plump and pink, active sustained movement, definite sleep wake cycles are present, and there's a strong suck reflex present. You can find a list of these milestones in human development in your textbook, page 162 to 163. This is a picture um, de depicting fetal circulation. Um, so you'll want to be familiar with this. Which system is the first organ system to function in the developing human? It's the cardiovascular system around the third week of development. What three special characteristics enable the fetus to obtain sufficient oxygen from the paternal blood? 
fetal hemoglobin carries about 20 to 30 percent more oxygen than maternal hemoglobin. The hemoglobin concentration of the fetus is about 50 percent greater than that of the mother. The fetal heart rate is around 110 to 160 beats a minute, making cardiac output per unit of body weight higher than that of an adult. When is fetal young maturity detectable? At about week 21 to 24. And what are we looking for when we're looking for fetal lung maturity? Pulmonary surfactants or phospholipids. You can find this information in your textbook between 150, page 156 and page 158. Fetal circulation. The fetal lungs are collapsed and basically non-functioning in utero. The fetus must get oxygen from maternal blood via the placenta. The oxygenated blood flows to the fetus through the umbilical vein. The oxygenated blood must go to the ductus venous where it divides. Part of it goes to the hepatic portal circulation and the remainder goes to the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood goes through the foramen ovale to the left atrium, left ventricle, aorta, brain, upper extremity, and coronary arteries. From the brain, blood returns through the superior vena cava into the right atrium, to the right ventricle, and up to the pulmonary artery. From the pulmonary artery, we are going to trickle some blood into the lungs. The remainder of the blood goes through the ductus arteriosus through the aorta to the lower part of the body. The blood returns to the placenta via the umbilical arteries. This concludes chapter 6.